In 2006, two ordinary office workers, Mark Merrill and Brandon Beck, who were crazy about a mod for the Blizzard game Warcraft 3 that was titled Defense of the Ancients at that time, left their company and decided to start their games business and co-founded Riot Games. Mark and Brandon wanted to develop a Dota-style mobile game, but not as a mod. So they teamed up with Steve Quinsu Feek, a designer of the original Defense of the Ancients mod, and Steve Pendragon Mascon, the creator of DotaAllStars.com, a community website for Dota players. So, in September 2006, they started developing a game and League of Legends Clash of Fates was first introduced to the public on October 7, 2008. After closed beta on April 10 and open beta on October 22, and on October 27, 2009, Riot Games released League of Legends, and the Clash of Fates subtitle was dropped. The game became very popular with its neat graphics and low entry barriers, and above all, it was free to play without the use of platforms such as Warcraft. MOBA began with Eon of Strife, a custom map for StarCraft. League of Legends was distributed in South Korea in 2011, where StarCraft was tremendously popular. By March 2012, League of Legends had become the number one title in Korean PC cafes. South Korea dominated the League of Legends World Championship. The world in which League of Legends takes place is called Rune Terra. It comprises the supercontinent of Valorant, the continent of Aenea, Shadow Isles, and Blue Flame Islands. The Kingdom of Demacia is a nation located in the western part of North Valorant, sharing its borders with the Empire of Noxus. The two nations are political, military, and ideological rivals and see the other as a threat. Demacia is ruled by Jarvan III and values the ideals of justice, honor, and duty highly. On the other hand, Noxus is a country where the physically and mentally strong acquire power through any means, regardless of the consequences to their fellow citizens. The two have fought the Rune Wars for centuries. Because of this, Valoran has suffered enormous damage and the last two Rune Wars drastically altered the geophysical landscape of Valoran. Hence, Valoran's key magicians, including many powerful summoners, came to the conclusion that conflicts needed to be resolved in a controllable and systemic way. They formed an organization called the League of Legends, whose purpose was to oversee the orderly resolution of political conflict in Valoran. Housed in the Institute of War, the League would be given the authority by Valoran's political entities to govern the outcomes of the organized conflict they would administer. Since then, political conflicts had to be solved only through battles between champions summoned by the summoners fought on the fields of justice, not war. The League of Legends is supervised by a council of three powerful summoners, known as the High Council of Equity, Vasaria Kalmini, Kirsten Mandrake, and Reginald Ashram. So both Demacia and Noxus had to follow the council, and Demacia and Noxus stopped almost all direct confrontation between them. No longer in direct war with Demacia, Noxus had turned his expansionist eye towards conquering those who remained outside of the Demacian's jurisdiction, Noxus, a militaristic nation aimed for Ionia, which remained neutral and was not being protected by the League as a new target for invasion. Ionia is a continent-spanning nation off the east coast of the Valoran, and is a land of unspoiled beauty and natural magic. Its inhabitants, living in scattered settlements across the massive island continent, are a spiritual people who seek to live in harmony and balance with the world. Because of this, Ionia did not join the League of Legends. So when the invasion of Noxus began, they began to fight back on their own. Noxus brought in mercenaries from Zaun. Since the mad chemist launched a biochemical terror on non-combatant civilians and killed numerous Ionian citizens, three of Ionia's southern provinces, Galrin, Navori, and Shonsan were conquered by the Noxians. The residents were treated as second-class citizens and were suppressed and exposed to looting and exploitation. Seven years after the Noxian invasion began, the remaining Ionian families brought together by the Duchess Karma had decided to join the League of Legends to avoid further bloodshed, and petitioned to have the Noxians removed from Ionian soil. The decision was made to settle the matter on the fields of justice. Ionia openly challenged Noxus with a duel of their finest warriors. The match between Ionia and Noxus was coined the Trial for the Isle. Despite the best efforts of Ionian champions, they lost. Noxus was granted the right to maintain its occupation of the Ionian provinces, and no appeal of the decision could be made for 15 years. However, seven years later, when a single Shoujin monk set fire to himself in protest of the Noxian occupation, 
The world was shocked. Almost immediately, there was a public outcry for the league to reconsider its ruling. Moved to action, many of Aenea's most notable figures spoke out, demanding an early rematch. In uncharacteristic fashion, Noxus offered Aenea an early rematch. The rematch was an event by Riot Games, in which 10 players were selected to play an official match that will affect the course of Rune Terror's lore. The result of the match was victory for Aenea. It says that Udyr fought with Aeneas against Noxians voluntarily and was the MVP in the match. Anyway, Aenea achieved independence from Noxus, and Riot Games presented Aenean Boots of Lucidity as a reward for winning the second trial for the Isle. The Freljord is a region located in the northern part of Valoran, covered in snow and ice. The region was divided and dominated between three nomad tribes, the Averosan, the Frostguard, and the Winter's Claw. These three tribes had war over Freljord. One day Mavli, the princess of the Frostguards, suddenly died and Lysandra became the new leader. Lysandra swore fealty to another of the three princesses of Freljord, Ash of the Averosan, who desired for unification of Freljord. Freljord's hegemony began to tilt toward Ash. At the same time, Trindamir, the barbarian king, married Ash for political reasons and allied himself with her to prepare against the invasion by Noxus, and Freljord has maintained a stable population and government structure. In April 2013, however, everything changed when Lysandra joined the champions. Freljord was once ruled by humans. They were led by three sisters, Avarosa, Cyrilda, and Lysandra. The Frozen Watchers approached them, offering gifts, magic, and immortality, in exchange for their services and loyalty. The sisters and their people were titled the Iceborn. Lysandra became the Seeker and Voice of the Watchers, secretly betraying her sisters in exchange for her master's power. The Iceborn served the Watchers willingly at first, winning them a vast empire and building them the fortress now standing over the Howling Beast. After some time, Two Iceborne leaders, Avarosa and Cyrilda, united the Iceborne and started a rebellion against the Watchers, tired of their servitude. The final stand against the Watchers took place on the bridge crossing the Howling Abyss. Many Iceborne died, but in the end, the Watchers were overrun and thrown howling into the Abyss, giving the crevasse its name. An Iceborne was chosen to guard the place in case the Watchers returned. Avarosa encased Gregor in ice so his spirit could stand vigilant eternally sounding the horn if their former masters returned. After the defeat of the Watchers, one Iceborne, the Seeker, who stood on the side of the Watchers, killed the survived Iceborns one by one including Avarosa. You can find out the identity of the Seeker in Gregor's coat if you enter the store as Lysandra in the Howling Abyss. Seeker, you still live? The Seeker was a respected leader of the tribe, but some say she betrayed us. Lysandra is under the guise of allegiance with the Avarosans and longs for the glorious return of the Watchers. Sejani had been fooled by Lysandra and rebelled against Ash. Finally, war erupts between Ash's Avarosan tribe and Sejuani's Winter's Claw over who would truly rule the Freljord. Though unbeknownst to them, Lysandra has secretly been preparing her tribe for the return of the Watchers. She betrays Ash and reveals herself as the Ice Witch of Legends. The war between the Freljordian leaders occurred and Volibear, Olaf, and Udyr joined them. Piltover and Zaun are located in the northern part of Valoran. Piltover and Zaun are the two leading city-states in the development of Hextech. Zaun is a place where there are no regulation on various kinds of chemical experiments and suffers from the pollution from the countless factories and laboratories constantly spewing into the environment. On the other hand, Piltover is a hopeful city-state with advanced technology under strict regulation. Accordingly, Zaun shares a friendly relationship with the nation of Noxus, and Piltover has a friendly relationship with Demacia and Bandal City. Zaun and Piltover are better rivals, yet symbiotic societies. Both city-states push one another in innovation. However, they are both ideological counter-opposites. They also share deep historical, social, and cultural connections. Bendel City, which is famous for Heimendinger's hometown, is the land of Yordles located in the southeastern part of Valoran. The word Yordl is a combination of Yoda and Yaddle from Star Wars. They were a nomadic race, traveling from one part of Valoran to the other. But today, the vast majority of the Yordle society dwells in Bendel City. 
Yordles have relatively good relationship with Demacia and Piltover, but they have hostility towards Noxus and Bilgewater. Their good relationship between Demacia owes Poppy, the hero of Demacia. And Piltover is deeply involved with Yordles who are experts in science. The relationship with Noxus is bad because of the anti-Yordle sentiment in Noxus. The Noxians even called them the deformed descendants of ancient humans and wanted to exile them from the country. Ties between Bandle City and Bilgewater have always been a little tense, mainly due to the occasional pirate assaults on Yordle vessels. Their relationship became worse when Bilgewash and pirates attacked a luxury merchant ship which was going to the party celebrating Poppy's Demacian envoy appointment, and Timo and Tristana went to the scene to clear up the situation. Bilgewater is an island nation of the Blue Flame Islands, which are located in the southeastern coast of Valorant. Due to the lack of resources because of its poor surroundings, Bilgewashan started piracy and hunting sea monsters. Because of his piracy, Bilgewater is certainly not in a good relationship with other city-states. Thanks to Gangplank's marauding against Noxian warfleets, Bilgewater and Noxus are on shaky terms with one another. And at some point, the Bilgewashans even managed to steal the Leviathan, Swain's personal warship, and earn the personal enmity of Noxus's Grand General. However, Bilgewashan pirates and Noxians on occasion will assist each other if it brings benefits. Anyway, because of its piracy, the Institute of War tried to wipe out Bilgewater. However, Gangplank voluntarily joined the League, so Bilgewater survived. Bilgewater is close to the Shadow Isles than any other area, and the first to be enveloped by the early harrowing. The Shadow Isles is a mysterious island kingdom located southeast of Bilgewater. Shadow Isles was once a beautiful realm named Blessed Isles. The island is isolated by mist and barrier of light surrounding it, so it was not easy to approach the island from Valoran. Callista was a proud general, niece to the powerful king of an empire that doesn't exist anymore. Callista traveled the world, seeking a cure for her dying queen, who got poisoned by the assassins but always without success. Finally, she learned of a legendary island beyond the ken of mortal eyes, a place set to hold the key to eternal life, the Blessed Isles and set sail on a last voyage of hope. Callista begged them to heal the queen, and the master of the order instructed Callista to bring her to the island, where they would cleanse her body. As Callista boarded her ship, she was given the arcane words to pierce the glamours protecting the island, but was warned against sharing that knowledge. Callista returned to her kingdom with a glad heart, but arrived too late. The queen was already dead. The king had descended into grief-stricken madness, locking himself in his tower with the queen's festering corpse. The king demanded her to tell him what she had found. However, Callista refused, remembering the warning given to her and knowing there was no purpose in bringing a corpse to the island. Hecarim convinced her to tell the king what she knew. He urged her to let the king find peace, either in his wife returning to him or in finally accepting she was gone and allowing her to be buried on the Blessed Isles. Hesitantly, for she sensed something amiss in Hakarim, Callista agreed. Callista went back to the island and spoke the mystic words to undo the veil shrouding the island. The king ordered the man to bring his wife back from the dead, but was told that trying to cheat death went against the natural order of the world. The king flew into a fevered rage and commanded Callista to kill the guardians. Callista refused and instead tried to protect the guardians. Hakarim stepped towards Callista as if to stand at her side. But Hecarim now saw a chance to realize his long simmering ambition of replacing Callista as the king's favorite. So instead, he drove his spear through her back in an act of betrayal and commanded the Iron Order to slay the inhabitants of the Blessed Isles. Hecarim and his warriors slaughtered the guardians until a lantern bearing wretch finally led the king to what he sought the secret to resurrecting his wife. But when the queen returned to life, she was a horror of decayed meat and maggot-ridden flesh who begged to be allowed to die once more. Repulsed at what he had done to his beloved wife, the king enacted a spell to end their lives and bind them together for all eternity. His conjuration was successful, but unwittingly empowered by the many potent magical artifacts stored on the island, its power was increased a hundredfold. A hurricane of black mist surrounded the king, spreading across the island and killing everything it touched. All living things slain by the black mist became undead. As uncontrolled sorcery filled him, Hecarim and his mighty steed were fused together in a monstrous abomination that reflected the true darkness of his soul. Also Thresh, who was once a member of an order devoted to gathering and protecting knowledge became what he is now. Maokai, the first and the strongest nature spirit of the Blessed Isles, turned into a twisted treant when the mist leached life from him. 
but Maokai's heartwood was saturated with the precious water of life, saving him from the terrible fate of undeath. Meanwhile, after the Blessed Isle's cataclysm, Mordekaiser was unleashed once again, when the vaults securing Mordekaiser's skull were torn asunder. This incident called the Ruination turned Blessed Isles into today's Shadow Isles. Of course, the item, Blade of the Ruined King, is related to this catastrophe, 